As House managers in the Senate impeachment trial seek to prove that the president is a criminal who's unfit for office, the president is providing more evidence that he's a criminal who's unfit for office. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. You might recall that earlier this week, after a tense exchange between House managers and President Trump's defense team, Chief Justice John Roberts, who's presiding over the impeachment trial, warned both sides to observe the decorum accorded to such an august body as the United States Senate. I think it is appropriate at this point for me to admonish uh, both the House managers and the President's counsel in equal terms uh, to remember that they are addressing the world's greatest deliberative body. The world's greatest deliberative body? Are you serious? There's better deliberation between the hosts of The Voice. <laughs> this is a place where a sitting senator once brought out a giant poster of Ronald Reagan holding a machine gun riding a velociraptor <laughs> to mock the Green New Deal, and where another senator, James Inhofe, infamously held up a snowball to try to prove that global warming isn't real. It is not a great deliberative body. It's more like show-and-tell hour at the senior center. <laughs> also, the Senate isn't a deliberative body because it doesn't deliberate. It does nothing. It's where legislation passed by the House goes to die. Democrats have passed hundreds of bills on everything from the minimum wage to prescription drugs to equal pay to voting rights, and Mitch McConnell's ignored all of it. In his office, he separates his trash into three different cans. For evidence against the president, legislation passed by the House in plastic. <laughs> And in this trial, in this trial right now, we are very much seeing at least some of the senators live down to the very low expectations they've set for themselves. For example, former senator and MSNBC contributor Claire McCaskill expressed some concern that members of the Senate might not be able to stay awake through the trial and listen to the evidence for long, uninterrupted periods. For senators, this is hard because they're used to moving constantly, they're used to talking constantly, they are not used to listening for long periods of time. I love how the hardest thing to ask a senator to do is just shut the up for one lousy day. <laughs> just sit down and shut up. It's not hard, it's irritating, but it's not hard. Also, you know who else is used to talking and moving and has difficulty listening for long periods of time? Children. We talk about senators the way pre-K teachers talk about story time. Well, they're used to moving and talking, so we only made it halfway through Clifford commits a crime. <laughs> but it's true, senators apparently are having a tough time doing their jobs because there have reportedly been stretches of the trial where senators have been caught napping or missing from their desks, and the AP reported today that almost immediately bored and weary senators started openly flouting some basic guidelines at a chamber that prizes decorum. When one of the freshman House prosecutors stood to speak, many of the senator jurors bolted for the cloakrooms where their phones are stored. Oh, my God, they're like parents at a school play when someone else's kid is on stage. Okay, Tyler's part is done, so I'm gonna go warm up the car for three hours. <laughs> Also, read the first part of that sentence again. How can you be bored almost immediately? <laughs> this is a historic Senate impeachment trial, not a French New Wave film. And by the way, we get it, Truffaut. Life is hard and death's inevitable. Would it kill you to throw in a guy getting hit in the nuts with a soccer ball just once? <laughs> in fact, at one point, one of the House managers prosecuting the case against Trump, Jason Crow, a combat veteran, was laying out in damning detail just how egregious Trump's crime was when he noticed that senators were leaving the chamber and commented on that fact. There is a process for making sure that U.S. aid money makes it to the right place to the right people. And Mr. Chief Justice, uh, I, I, I do see uh, another lot of members moving and, and taking a break. We would like to take a break at this time. I have another probably 15 minutes. That's insane. I mean, in the middle of laying out damning evidence against the president of the United States, in the middle of a historic Senate impeachment trial, and he had to stop to ask if the members needed a break. Can you imagine an episode of Law and Order where the jury just walks out during Sam Watterson's big speech, his eyebrows would raise right off his head. <laughs> and not only... Not only have senators been napping, fidgeting, and leaving the room as evidence of the president's crime is laid out before them, some of them are even whining about the amenities. For example, Louisiana Senator Bill Cassidy complained to the AP, there's coffee, but it's miserable coffee. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, is the coffee at the Senate impeachment trial not gourmet enough for you? Should we have George Clooney stop by and bring you an espresso machine? And you know who I bet definitely doesn't care about the quality of the coffee? Bernie Sanders. I drink black coffee out of a tin cup like an old prospector, and that's it. 
I don't even rinse. So Republicans can't be bothered to pay attention to the evidence, and neither, it seems, can Trump's own defense team. If you've been watching the trial in detail, you might have noticed a stark difference between the table where the Democratic House prosecutors have been sitting and the table where Trump's defense team has been sitting. You see the council table, that's the uh, impeachment manager's table on the left, that's got all the paper on it. The much cleaner council <laughs> table on the right is the, uh, the, White House the White House defense counsel for the president. You can tell a little bit about the difference in approach from the two sides simply from looking at their work environments. It's true, the Democrats' table looks like it has actual evidence on it, and the Trump team's table looks like a busboy just cleaned it off. I guess it's not surprising, given that Trump's desk is also always so clean. I mean, look at that. He looks like a tourist taking a photo on the set of the West Wing. Is this... Is this the same phone Martin Sheen used? This is so cool. And even when they do have papers, Trump's defense team usually doesn't seem prepared to actually use them. I mean, the last time a lawyer showed up to Congress to defend Trump, he was literally lugging his documents around in a grocery store tote bag. Remember that guy from the House hearing, Steve Castor? He was either a lawyer or a guy the Republicans randomly picked from the frozen aisle at Whole Foods. <laughs> Quick, can you come defend the president from impeachment? All right, I guess. Just let me finish filling my tote bag with these Amy's burritos. <laughs> In fact, Trump's team was apparently so unwilling to listen to the actual arguments Democrats were making that at one point, Trump's lawyer, Jay Sekulow, went off on an angry tirade about something he misheard during the trial. Basically, one of the House prosecutors made a reference to FOIA lawsuits to obtain documents. FOIA is just an acronym for Freedom of Information Act. If you're in politics or law or really just a person who reads the news, you've probably heard that term before. But Sekulow thought she said the words lawyer lawsuits, which makes no sense at all. And then he went off about it. The president's lawyers may suggest that the House should have sought these materials in court or awaited further lawsuits under the Freedom of Information Act, a.k.a. FOIA lawsuits. And by the way, lawyer lawsuits? <laughs> lawyer lawsuits? We're talking about the impeachment of a president of the United States, duly elected. And the members, the managers, are complaining about lawyer lawsuits? <laughs> the Constitution allows lawyer lawsuits. <laughs> it's disrespecting the Constitution of the United States to even say that in this chamber. Lawyer lawsuits. She didn't say it because it's not a thing. Also, if it was a thing, why would you be insulted by it? Lawyer lawsuits is just a redundant way to describe a job. Like bus driver bus driving. <laughs> what the f did you say? <laughs> Seriously. How have you never heard? How have you never heard the term FOIA lawsuits before? You're supposed to be a lawyer. Did they also pick you out of the line at Whole Foods? All right. Who else here wants to defend the president from impeachment? You get a $10 coupon for an espresso. And Sekulow isn't the only Trump defender who doesn't seem to know how the law works. Fox News host Janine Pirro lashed out on Twitter in the middle of the trial as House Manager Adam Schiff was presenting his case, writing, Prosecutor Adam Schiff says Donald Trump is not innocent. Way to go, Democrats. No presumption of innocence, no constitutional guarantees. Welcome to America under Democrat rule. Have you never seen a trial before? <laughs> Prosecutors are supposed to argue that the defendant is guilty. That's how it works. They don't walk out and say, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, today we're going to figure out some stuff together, and however it breaks is good with me. <laughs> how do you not know that? Your show is literally called Justice with Judge Janine. Are you actually a judge, or did you just pick that name because you love alliteration? I mean, in that case, you could have also gone with Janky Janine's Jibber Jabber Junction. <laughs> now, while this was going on, Trump was at the World Economic Forum in Davos, where he confirmed that he was watching the impeachment proceedings. And in the process, he actually confessed to one of the articles of impeachment obstructing Congress. During a press conference, Trump bragged that his side was winning the trial because he was hiding all of the evidence from House prosecutors. We're doing very well. I got to watch enough. I thought our team did a very good job. But honestly, we have all the material. They don't have the material. He literally just confessed. Again, the guy confesses more than a 15-year-old Catholic boy. <laughs> Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned four times in the bathroom at home and once in the bushes by cheerleader practice. Also, I'd love to wrap this up so I can get home and sin again. 
Trump, of course, is only the third president in history to face the prospect of being removed from office by the Senate in an impeachment trial. Now, you might expect a normal person in that position to do everything possible to prove that they're competent, sane, fit for office. Instead, here is the sitting president of the United States amid historic reckoning that will stay in his name and presidency forever, talking about how Tesla CEO Elon Musk is good at rockets. Tesla's now worth more than GM and Ford. Do you have comments on Elon Musk? Well, you have to give him credit. I spoke to him very recently, and he's also doing the rockets. He likes rockets, and uh, he does good at rockets, too, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he does. He does good at rockets. The presidency of Donald Trump is the closest we'll ever come to finding out what it would be like if Tarzan worked at NASA. <laughs> Ground control to Tarzan, what's your status? Space cold for Tarzan, but Tarzan good at rockets. <laughs> what we've seen once again this week is that Trump and his lawyers have no defense for his obviously corrupt behavior, which is why their desks are empty and their Republican allies are leaving the chamber and ignoring the evidence, even if he's acquitted. By the Senate, Trump may very well spend the rest of his life in court dealing with legal challenges and indictments, or as they're technically known, lawyer lawsuits. This has been a closer look.